you can see I have swapped the parka and toque for some sand, some sun, and some sunscreen. Today I want to talk about how I take epic landscape photos on vacation while I leave my camera at home. So for many people, their phone is their camera, and rightly so. My iPhone 13 has a 13 millimeter wide angle lens, and it will do perfectly for the shot that I'm thinking of. So most people that want to use their phone as their camera will use the stock camera app or will buy a third party app, and that's exactly what I do. I use the camera app on iPhone, which has a lot of intelligence built in. It will do post-processing right after you take the photo, and it also does in the moment computational photography to get the settings perfect, take multiple images and stitch them together. It'll do that all right in front of you. I use the camera app specifically for anything that's gonna be low light or have dynamic range scenarios like sunsets and sunrises. You can easily shoot a photo directly into the sun with the camera app and expect that every single thing in your frame will be perfectly exposed. The other app that I use is actually Lightroom. Inside of there for the iPhone, it will have a camera app, and it's not as advanced as the stock camera app, but it allows for full camera setting control, including manual focus, and it's free to you if you have Lightroom for the desktop. I always bring a tripod. I recommend using a tripod for any landscape photo that you're going to take, even for phone photos. And I do this for one reason. A tripod allows your workflow to slow down. And a photo like the one that I'm taking requires a little bit of planning. So I can still do that planning, get the composition just right, and then wait for the light to be perfect. And I don't have to do more than one thing at one time. I can set my composition up, then wait for the light to get good and take the photo when I need to. And it simplifies the work that I'm doing because it allows me to focus on one thing at a time. And I'm always taking test shots, looking at them for a few seconds, adjusting my tripod, reviewing them, adjusting, reviewing them. And that process of iteration and refinement is made much easier by a tripod. The last thing that I do anytime I'm taking any photo, vacation or not, is planning. Figure out the subject that you want to take a photo of, figure out when it's going to be the best time of the day, sunrise, sunset, the best time of the week maybe that you're on vacation to take that photo. For me, Caribbean vacations are all about fun in the sun and sunsets cap off an awesome day. That's my plan on getting a photo today. Well, this is the shot that I've got framed up. Um, I have been able to find one particular spot on the beach. I've got a couple of friends of mine uh, keeping people away out of my shot so that I can continue to, uh, to shoot. I think I've got what looks like 15 minutes before the sun goes completely down, so maybe in 10 minutes I'll start shooting. What I'm hoping to get is the silhouette of this beautiful tree right in the center with the sun underneath it, lighting it up from below, lighting maybe some of these branches, definitely the sun, and pointing directly into the camera. There aren't really much in the way of clouds today, but um, you never do know. Clouds just start to appear from time to time in a windy place such as Aruba. So I'm going to be using one of two apps today. I think the first obviously is the Photos app, and the settings that I take usually are that I will shoot in RAW on my iPhone 13. I'll almost always shoot with a timer, so I will do a three second timer. I'm probably going to underexpose this image just a little bit, maybe let's call it 0.3 so that I can end up with um, a little bit less exposure on the sun, but then probably I'll also take another shot and um, expose the tree very well so that I can stitch them together in Photoshop. This isn't gonna work particularly well because the branches and the leaves are moving very, very quickly with the wind, but hopefully if I take the right shot, I will be able to get the, uh, the tree trunk with a little bit of detail on it rather than just being in, in shade. And then even if I decide just to do a silhouette, I have options later if I've taken that that photo. The other app that I might use is the Lightroom app, which interestingly enough has a camera. I've set this up already, five second timer using the ultra wide 13 millimeter lens, but look I've got some other options here. So I can set my ISO either to auto or in this case I'm going to set it as low as I can get it at 25 and then I have some options to be able to set my shutter speed and I can figure out what kind of exposure that I'm going to want. Additionally, you also have the options here to turn on things like highlights. And then when I decide to take my shutter speed far up, I can actually see that I've got zebra display. Again, more like a traditional camera. I think for today, because I've got high dynamic range, I'm gonna end up using the cameras app and take advantage of the computational photography that's going to allow for me to take this shot just right. 
Anyways, I've got 10 minutes or so, so I'm going to continue to adjust my shot, look around, try to find something really special. Maybe I'll zoom out just a little bit, go back just a little bit to see if I can get a little less of this tree, a little more of the, uh, more of the sky. We shall see. I'm sure it'll be wonderful. Well, it wasn't wonderful, if I'm honest. My planning and timing just didn't work out. The photo was nothing special, so I won't bore you with it. But on a different day, at a different beach, I did get another stunning shot that I hope you'll enjoy. And for sticking around this long, I'll reward you with the video I took when my beloved Panama hat disappeared into the Caribbean Ocean. Great. No. Ah. That's gone. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now. Ah.